Good morning. How are you today? It is another Tuesday morning. I am out here in Las Vegas. Oh, where'd my cross go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> anyway, I'm out here in Las Vegas and we are expecting some cold temperatures. Always have to get the weather report, you right? Um, it's been 60 the last several days, 60, 65. Um, it's down, I think, to about 40 today, and we're supposed to get down in the low 30s, maybe even 29, which is pretty severe here in Vegas. We're not quite used to that, so um, I have to say that I am excited that on Friday I am leaving to go to Florida to go on a cruise with our fun, fearless female gals. Good morning, Jennifer. Jennifer is going to be on the cruise. Hi, Allison. Good morning. Thank you for your message. Um, I haven't had a chance to respond back to you yet. I don't think I did. I, I read it real quick before I got on. And uh, so some of us will be going on our fun, fearless female cruise. We leave on, well, let's see, leaving Friday here to get on the, the ship. I was going to say get on the boat. That's more than a boat. Get on the ship at, um, uh, on Saturday, and then we'll be gone for five days. So looking forward to that. I think Jennifer was doing our uh, weather report. We might have a couple of cool days but like, oh my gosh, they're going to be 70. Um, and then, uh, but most of the time, I think it is in the mid-70s. I mean, maybe one day, is that right, Jennifer? We're supposed to be 80. I'm actually really looking forward to that because I am um, not always excited about 100. Here in Vegas, you know, we can get to 105, 110. I don't really love that, but I stay inside most of the time anyway, so it doesn't really um, affect me. But the sun out here, you know, is... Um, about 360 days out of 365, so we love that. And I think we've had all five, we've, we've had more cloudy days here in the last couple of weeks than we normally do, I think, for the year. So, but the rain is, we've had a little rain and that's always good. Jennifer, yes, one day is 80, like, woohoo! I love 80, 80 is good. So how's everybody doing this morning? Do a little check-in with me. How you doing, Allison? Things going well with you? And uh, let's see, Lisa's on. Good morning, Lisa. Diane Janeri, good morning. I love that. <laughs> nice to see you, my girlfriend. Diane and I were raising our kids together, literally. Um, we had, well, let's see, Alicia was a baby, and um, Chris, um, my brain just left. Marisa was just a little baby, and then Diane had Christine a little bit later after that. But we lived in Kansas City on the cul-de-sac on Stern Street. And I mean, we watched those kids go from their, their little Hot Wheels or Big Wheels, I guess it was, um, up and down the cul-de-sac. And our husbands both traveled, so I tell you, God was good bringing us together. <laughs> so, anyway, um, let's see. I see Kathy Weaver. Good morning, Miss Kathy. Nice to see you this morning. So give me the weather port in Kansas City. And Diane, you're up in uh, Columbus. What's your weather like? Are y'all still frozen up there? Oh my goodness, I forgot to... Okay, you guys, this might be really rude. I don't think it's really rude. Hold one second. I'm coming back. You can hear me. Okay, this is one of my... I've got my tea, right? But I forgot to put my sweetener in it. So, I'll do a little advertisement. I do liquid stevia for my sweetener and I just I just like sweets. Y'all know I have issues with sweet. Um, however, I will say I'm back on my no sugar. This year I'm doing a little different. Last year, you know, I didn't do sugar in the first. Sugar was on my anniversary on October 14th and I had a hot fudge sundae. It was awesome. And then in uh, November for Thanksgiving, I did the same thing and had the same thing, hot fudge sundae, which is my favorite thing. <clears throat> just so y'all know, this is like pretty crazy, but even at my, my celebration of life, when I'm no longer here and I'm up in heaven with Jesus, at my celebration, I want balloons and hot fudge sundays to just celebrate being alive. So just <laughs> letting y'all know that. Um, I don't know why. Well, actually, I do know why, but I won't go into it. Um, Diane, okay, spring thaw. Yay, I know you love that. And Kathy, I see Drizzly coming today and tomorrow. Oh, yuck. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> it's like... Oh, gosh. So, hey, I have a couple things to share with y'all this morning. I mean, really, I should have something since we're talking. Um, in our, I meet with a group every Friday morning when I'm in town, and it's called GIFTS, G-I-F-T-S, and it's 
Girlfriends in Fellowship together. And we do a, <clears throat> a Bible study or book study, um, you know, in the, in the fall and in the spring. And one of our uh, gals uh, in there, her, I don't think she'll mind me saying her name because I always have great things to say about her, um, is Marion. And she shared a story with us. And I thought it was so great I wanted to share this with you. So her husband, Ron, we all go to church together, and Ron is a pharmacist. Now, he has been in the pharmacy business. Eileen, good morning, Eileen. And Lydia Tompkins, wow, good morning. Uh, for like 40, I was just talking to him on Sunday, I think 40, maybe getting close to 50 years. I mean, and, and he's, he's so smart, and he does such an amazing job, and he really, really cares about people. So anyway, the, um, what he's told me through time is that so often people coming in for their prescriptions um, are not always nice, okay? They're not always friendly. Many are, but some are not. And, you know, part of it maybe is they're sick or, or whatever the case may be. And so a lot of times he has to deal with some unpleasant type of situations. And um, good morning, Lisa. Lisa, you're going on our cruise, right? We were talking about the cruise a few minutes ago. So yay. Um, so one day, uh, just recently, when Ron was at work, first he had a lady who came up to the, the counter and was just, for whatever the reason, it wasn't because of anything he did, because he was watching, and this lady went up and just started dumping on the other pharmacist, the, the, the young woman who was at the counter. And so Ron, being the head pharmacist, he kind of watched, and it just wasn't calming down, so he stepped in and uh, tried to... Uh, manage it with this lady who was just getting irate about whatever it was, okay? And so then uh, finally that lady left, and uh, a little bit later another lady walked up just the opposite and was very nice, and she looked at Ron, and she got her she got a prescription or whatever she needed, and then she handed him a card, and she said, I just want you to know that you make a difference, you handled that situation so well, and you know you just make a difference every day. And she handed him a card, and the card, and I, I and Kathy, I know you've told me how you don't, you haven't told me how to do it yet. You've told me there's a way to do it, and it's she handed him a card. Y'all, y'all can't see it, but it says you make a difference, and that's all that's on it is just the front of the card that just says you make a difference, and that made and it made a difference to him that this lady took that moment to say you make a difference, and. A while back, it's probably been six, eight, eight months ago, I remember telling y'all a story about um, a teacher who did a very similar thing, and she gave the kids three ribbons, and she gave one to them to tell them how they made a difference in her life, and then gave them two more to give to somebody else that made a difference in their life, and it was ribbons. And I went out looking for ribbons and thought, you know, of ways that we could do something like that within our group. But this is, this is even easier, and... So this is something I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some of these little, I'm going to go make them or order them from Vistaprint or something. Uh, but I think this is great because we talk a lot about how important it is to, when you find somebody who does something nice for you, somebody who gives you great service, somebody just whatever, you see them doing something good, how great um, it is just to recognize it, tell them thank you, appreciate them. And then, um, you know, it, it just makes their day. Well, this kind of takes it one step further in that you just give them a card and then they can kind of keep that with them. And every time they see it, they'll say, somebody appreciated me today. I did, I did something right today. Because a lot of times we actually wind up getting more negativity. Many people who are out in retail, you know, that is hard. I did work retail in my life. Um, it was When did I? Was that in college is where I did my first um, retail, I think, in a women's clothing store. And then after I got out of college, I worked retail for a little while too. So anyway, so that is a, you make a difference and you can even just write them out yourself. Take some blank, just cut out some little cards and then it didn't have a name on it. It wasn't a business card. It had nothing to do with building a business or networking or anything. It was just literally something to make someone feel bad, better and to know that you appreciated them. So isn't that a great idea? Hey, Amy, good morning. You're back with us. Erica, good morning. Lisa, yes, good morning. And you are excited to come on the cruise. I know, I know. Okay, guys, next time we go on a cruise, we gotta, we need to have a, I have a vision of 50 of us going. Can you see that? 50 of us on a cruise together. So uh, here's kind of what my plan is. 
um, you know, as my mother would say, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, would be that one year we'll go on a cruise, and then on another year we'll have a big event somewhere, like a two-day retreat like we did um, in, in Las Vegas about a year and a half ago. So if we kind of did a cruise or travel, maybe not, it would have to be a cruise, but something like that, um, and then one year, in alternate, then one year do um, a retreat so that we're doing some traveling together and sharing that time. So y'all be thinking about that, put that in the back of your head. All right, anybody else? Let me see if there's anybody else I can say. Jessica, did I say good morning to you yet? Good morning. Let me just click down through here. And I already said good morning to Lydia. Good. Okay. All right. So y'all try it. And I would love to know if you do that, if you do the hand out the cards, okay, if you do that, um, I would love to know your stories. That would be so cool to post on uh, on my, on the, my personal page, on the speaker page, on the Fun Fearless Female page. Uh, but all of you that I see so far are in our Fun Fearless Female group. So it would be a great place to do that. And just um, maybe, okay, so... I see Jennifer's on here. So Jennifer, maybe you'll remind me and I'll do a little posting on you make a difference. And then as you guys go out, you can post on there about somebody who made a difference and either gave them a card or um, a little something. I don't know. You could even give them, for Pete's sake, get creative, right? Y'all get creative. You could give them a piece of candy and say, you know what? I carry these little pops, uh, you know, suckers or Hershey Kisses or something, especially with Valentine's. I carry these around to give to people who make a difference every day. And so that's kind of cool, actually. The, the candy, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't say anything, but it'd be a great way to do it. <laughs> I love you, Jennifer. <laughs> um, okay, now, we had our, that after the first of the year, in Kansas City, you know, we had our January gatherings. We had all our lunches, which were great. So we got kicked off right away. Well, in Vegas, because the first Friday was two days after the first of the year, we, we did not do January. So our first one was last week and we, it's our first Friday luncheon. And I have to tell y'all, it was so exciting. We changed, we have a new venue. We're meeting at the Brio at town square here in Kansas city. I mean, <laughs> here in Las Vegas and we have a Brio in Kansas city too. So, uh, I haven't ever checked to see if they have a meeting room, <clears throat> but it's great because they're not they're not, they're not charging us a minimum. It's so nice and easy. We just go in. I got to order off the menu. And so it, it hit all of our parameters for having a meeting. So the room holds, he said, packed out the room will hold 28. <clears throat> we had 25. I was so excited. And half of the ladies were brand new that I'd never met before. So it was very exciting to just see that and have the ladies come in and join us. So um, any uh, Vegas people out there, Thank you for coming, and we'll be right back on, same place in March. So it'll be great to have that. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Nice to see you. So what I, um, one of the things that we did at the, at the luncheon the other day was I asked a couple of the people to share uh, their, their best business tip. And uh, this is one that's not new to you, but I think we need to be reminded of it because it's the thing that I think holds a lot of people back both in our personal lives, it holds us back in our goals, it holds us back in our dreams, and, uh, and definitely in our business as well. Sorry, I just had to have a little sip of my tea, so one second. And it was Rena McDonald, she's an attorney here in town, and she, the tip that she shared um, was to ask. Now, it just seems so simple, y'all, doesn't it? Like, well, duh, of course you have to ask. But so many times when we're doing things, we we get afraid. You know, I mean, I, I know that you do. I mean, there's just times when there's either something that you want and then you're just afraid to ask somebody. So let's talk about that just a little bit. Because here's the thing. If you do not ask for what you want, First of all, how does anybody know what it is you do want if you don't ask for it? Um, when our children, how do we know when our, you know, our child wants a drink of water, if they tell us, we can get them a drink of water, right? Um, if, you, if, if they uh, want a particular Superman toy or an action figure toy, right, for Christmas, how are you going to know unless they tell you what they want? Every person who's ever been, who is married or has ever been married, somebody had to ask the question. 
you know, will you marry me? Or do you want to get married? <laughs> All right. So in order to get what we want, in order to have the fulfilling life that we want, the truth is to have abundance even, right? We have to ask. So let's look at it from our business standpoint. Let me, let me take a little quick thing. Oh, so Amy, terrified, does that mean you're terrified to ask? Is that what is that what you're saying there? Make sure I understand. Allison, thank you, Brio. Okay, but they charge. Most most places do, that's my heart, that's my biggest challenge when I go into uh, try to find meeting rooms is that most of them do charge for the room where they have minimums and that's, that's actually happens a lot here in Vegas. It's been the... Uh, one of my most challenging things, but now this, uh, and actually it was because of a connection of one of my, one of our fun, fearless female gals who knew the manager who's able, who's working with us actually on it. So, so here's the thing. If you don't, good morning, Jessica. Uh, if you don't ask the question, they cannot say yes. Now I've talked about this, you know, I kind of come from different angles sometimes because it's so important. You will never, ever have what you want if you don't ask for it. So if you want to share your product, let's talk about business, okay? If you want to make an appointment, how is somebody going to make an appointment with you if you don't ask them, right? Um, if you don't say, gosh, I'd love to get together with you. When is a good time? Would Tuesday or Wednesday be better? And that's one of the things. I'll do a little, a little side jolt here. Sometimes we give people too many choices, and because of that, they can't, they can't give you an answer. Uh, I've used this example before, but it's so good, I'm going to do it anyway. So if I'm still there, are we back? Okay. Uh, yeah, if somebody tried to call in, and it kind of stops it for a minute. So if I go into a jewelry store and my husband says, honey, pick out anything you want. Well, I could probably stay in there for days because there would be so many choices, right? But if he says to me and he opens his hands up and he says, you know, which one of these would you like? Pick one or he points in the, in the counter and says, um, you know, which one of these do you want? I could pick one of the two or one of three, but it's going to take me a long time to pick out of the whole jewelry store. So when you're in your business, the important thing is to give people choices, but narrow the choices down for them. So for instance, if you want, uh, if you're trying to set an appointment, it's like, oh, I'd love to get together with you. I'm booking appointments for this week or next week, which would be better for you? Well, they're going to say, oh, well, this week would be okay. Oh, great. Well, do you need a daytime or an evening appointment? Well, I can't really do evenings because my kids are home and all, but I, I could do, you know, I could do during the day. Great. Now, I'm available on Tuesday or Wednesday morning, which of those would be better? Well, I really need an afternoon. Okay, great. Well, look, um, it looks on my calendar. I have Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon, which would be better for you. Which would you like? And then, you know, you just kind of go from there, always taking it down to where you're making a choice. This week or next week? Uh, daytime or night? Uh, in the morning or the afternoon? Because then you can narrow it down so it fits in their parameters and then they can make a decision you can actually book the appointment but it starts by asking the question um, let's say that you um, and you're out and about and you have a, a, so you have a product that you want to share with somebody and you would like to get their opinion on it and then you, you just need to ask and either they're gonna say yes or they're gonna say no or gosh I gotta think about it whatever right but if you're asking, you have a potential. You have the chance for somebody to say yes. Because if you never ask, they, they don't even know. And here's the other thing. Where, think about it. If you, wherever you are right now, when you're thinking of asking the question, if they say no, are you in any different place than you were before you asked the question? No. I mean, right now, okay, so let's say I want to ask, Susie to have an appointment to make an appointment with me or maybe to have coffee but people aren't too intimidated by coffee because coffees are fun and easy right that's what we do in our networking groups we get together for coffee chats so but let's say that you're wanting to um, actually you know do a demo and show her or you know give her a facial if you're you know somebody in the makeup business or you're whatever it is you know I, I don't know what all y'all's different businesses are so you're wanting to um, ask her for you know for that uh, appointment so right now if you don't ask her you don't have the appointment 
If you do ask her and she says no, you still don't have the appointment. You are no different than you were before you ask. However, if you ask and she says yes, now things are different, right? Now you do have an appointment or you have the opportunity to set the appointment. You see, the thing is, I think we're so afraid of you know, them saying no and why? Because then when they say no, doesn't change anything from where you are right now. Right now you don't have the appointment. If they say no, you still don't have the appointment. All you did, you know, but you asked the question. So it's so important to ask and hi there, good morning. Uh, one of our Las Vegas ladies is on. You know, it's like just 7.30, 7.45 out here. So it's a little early for us Vegas people. Um, you guys in Kansas City and, and further east, it's a little bit later in the morning for you. So yeah, I'm always happy to see the Vegas gals get on because it is a little earlier. So the other things are, think about all the things in your life. So what is it? So if you have a piece of paper, if some of you are driving, because I know often Jennifer uh, Mills is driving when she's listening to this, uh, but if you are not driving and you can, just right off the top of your head, I mean, I'd love it if you would share it with me, but I know sometimes you're not comfortable to do that, but just write down, you know, what is it that you really want? What do you want? You want more money? Do you want more opportunities? What do you want? You want... Um, you know, if you're single and you want a, a, a loving relationship, what is it that you want? So think about the things. And this doesn't, the thing is, I don't think you guys, it takes five minutes even. Most of the time, you know what it is you want. You know what it is that you're desiring in your heart. So just write it down. And then when you, when you write that down, then think about what does it take to make that happen? If you need more money, then probably you need to step up your business. Would that make sense? So if you need, if you want more money, and more is not a very is not a great goal because more doesn't really mean anything. So look at where you are, and, and you know, this gets kind of into goal setting and making a plan, kind of all com <laughs> combined here. But basically, let's just say that you say you want more money. Okay. So what does that mean? So let's say last year you made. I'm just going to pick a number out of there. Let's say you made sixty thousand last year, just for a a number and you want more this year so what would that look like would you want you know 10 percent more 66,000 this year or do you want significantly more you want 80,000 this year so once you know what it is and you can you know write it down and, and you can see it in black and white then it just becomes you, you begin to see what it is you need so how are you going to expand your business how many people do you need to ask for an appointment ask did you hear that in there how many people do you need to see? How many people do you need to meet? How many people need to ask for an appointment? And then the next part is really crucial. And this is where many, many people in sales get stopped. You don't ask for the appointment. You don't ask for the sale. You know, you've done this beautiful presentation and you know you can kind of feel that they like it. So then why don't you ask them? Okay, you know, what? so what can I do for you today? Would you like, the, you know, would you like to this set? or this set which one would be better for you you know based on what I've heard you say today it sounds to me like this you know all in one set would be perfect for you you know when uh, you know I'm gonna use Kathy's example she, they, she has uh, I think it's three I could be wrong three levels of machines and I know what she would say is well which would be better for you would you like the the model A model B model C you know which one of the models would you prefer so you must ask for the sale because if you don't ask they're not gonna buy it I mean really Think about that. And Mary Kay, y'all know it's in Mary Kay, and I would say, would you, would you prefer to start with your basic skincare set today, or do you want to really treat yourself and start with the Cadillac bag? The Cadillac bag had four levels of, like, everything you need. It was, like, wonderful. Okay, so I, yeah, they got a choice. Women love choices. We all like choices. And, again, it's easier to just choose from a couple of things as opposed to, well, you could have this with this, or you could have this with this, or if you want this, and you could go through ten choices, and by about the fifth one, you've already lost them. It's like, you know, can we just get to the bottom line? And many people, you know, in different personalities, and that's another, again, another whole discussion, which um, one of these mornings, Kathy, remind me, I really want you to come on and do a, a, a little thing on your bank system. I just think... We've done it before on other venues, but I would love for you to share a little bit of that one of these uh, Tuesday mornings if that works out. So connect with me later, okay? Uh, 
So you must ask. You have to know what you want. You need to ask for it. So I'm going to ask you guys, because I have something I want to ask you for this morning, and I want to just ask you to keep your eyes and ears open. If there is um, if there's a conference at your church, if there's a training opportunity, I would love to be considered. Um, my goal is to continue to expand across the United States. I love going in and speaking to women's groups, but I can also speak to men and women because a lot of the concepts we talk about as far as whether it's in training and sales or whatever um, are men and women. But I would love the opportunity to just um, submit my information. So if you know of anybody holding any kind of a conference or a meeting and they're looking for speakers, think of me. There you go. So that's my asking this morning. So what is it that you want to ask for? Think about that. And then once you look at that, and then, you know, we've been talking about abundance. Um, you need to ask your Heavenly Father for those things that are important to you. And the, you know, y'all know I'm not about name it and claim it, but I am about asking and I am about thanking. Thanking God for what he's doing in your life. And and just thank you. Say, Lord, I know you love me and you have great things for me. So, Lord, I'm just opening myself up to everything you have for me. Every, every blessing that you've already gone ahead to prepare, you have all these things in place. But sometimes we stay so narrow, we don't see it. So just ask him to show you. You know, show me what you have for me. Show me the, show me the past. Show me how I can be a bigger blessing to other people. You know, that is the thing when I wake up in the mornings, that's the thing that I pray for every morning is like, Lord, just... Make me a blessing to somebody today. That's, you know, that song that made me a blessing. Um, I've always loved that because that's what I really, that's what my goal is in my life is to be a blessing to other people. So think about what is it you want and don't be afraid to ask. They cannot say yes if you do not ask. So, I'm, uh, so Raina McDonald, thank you for sharing that tip at our Fun Fearless Female Luncheon the other day because I've been thinking about her talking about that and how important it is for us to do that. So go out this week, you guys. I see that our time is up. I so appreciate you spending your time with me as always. Uh, next week, we will not be here unless by some amazing chance I can do it from the, from the boat, <laughs> from the ship. Um, I don't know that we can, so I'm saying we will not meet, but if by some fluke I can figure it out and we can do it, then I'll just get on live and you'll see me. But otherwise, um, I, don't in, I don't intend, my plans will be to not be here next week. So I invite you all to go out there this week. Remember that life is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. Choose to ask for the things that you want. Choose to go out there and make it a fabulous week and... Let people know that they make a difference. Give them a chocolate. Give them a card. Do something to tell other people that they make a difference in your life. All right, you guys. Like I said, go out and make it a fabulous week because it is your choice. Bye now.